Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Today we're going to discuss last week's hacker challenge. Now, quite a few of you got it, and there were some of you who didn't, and those who didn't, it's not a big deal. We're going to discuss it today, and when I show you how it actually works, you're probably going to be kicking yourself right in the butt and saying, oh geez, that was really easy. So, as you, as you may have noticed, um, when we did make the post on the video's downloads uh, blog post, uh, we gave you some instruction. You have to go to this link here. Um, learnsnetsecnow.com slash videos and it tells you basically what it's going to do and it, it stresses to you to use logic in order to pull it off but there's two phases to it as we mentioned there's one phase where you have to break past the web page login then there's the second phase that you have to uh, actually find the password for the zip files of the videos right so there's two steps to it so let's get started so we click on this link and it brings you to the basic login web page. Now this is what you see in most websites. Um, however, most websites are programmed pretty secure uh, using PHP sessions and using uh, MySQL databases and stuff like that. So you might be asking yourself, well, how the heck do I know anything about this page? It doesn't say if it's an index.php page or an HTML page or, or what. Uh, I don't know the username and password. What should I do next? Well, to most people, they would say, well, hey, uh, you know, I guess I should try a brute force attack on this, and they would run a scanner all day long and probably not be able to figure it out. But if you use logic in order to do some basic investigative research at first, you'll find it pretty easy. So with most web pages, you can right-click on it and go to View Page Source, right? Especially in Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer even has it. So we want to check out what this form actually does. What is its function? Where is it going? What is it posting to? So if you just right click on the web page anywhere and go view page source, it'll open up another uh, window. So for those of you who are not familiar with how web pages and forms work, uh, and specifically PHP based uh, type forms and things like that, I'm going to go ahead and do a brief overview for you. So at the very first line here we see form method post. Now any time that there's something that you fill out and you hit a button to submit it, it's going to be in a form type. So at any time you can always, if there was this was full of code, you can always just do a, a control F and find greater than less than form and you're going to see it's going to bring it down to the very force, first form method. Okay, so we don't really need that. I can get rid of this. Okay, so form method post. Well, that means it's posting to something, right? It's sending data to something. The action is what it's sending data to, login.php in this case. Now, if you notice by reading this, login.php, you can tell that login.php is in the same directory as this, this web page itself. So, looking at that, uh, we can further surmise that... Uh, you know, we might try to get access to that login.php to see how it's programmed or what its validations are, but in most cases you really can't do that. So let's move further on down the uh, code here. Well, you can see the label here, username, which is up here as well, and that dictates an input type. Now, input type is always when you're putting information into a form. The type is text. So this is clear text. You, if you typed in the word Bob or the word Harold, uh, you would clearly see it as clear text right there on the screen as whatever you typed it in. Okay, so moving along, the name is what's used to dictate what is being submitted to the form, in this case, login.php. So the next one down says password. Well, that's where we put in our password as shown up here. The input type again, um, this time it's a little bit different, is actually called password. Now the difference between the input type password and the input type text is that uh, the password dictates that it's all in dots or hidden from you know basic view so nobody can shoulder surf you and watch you type in your password to this ultra secure secret login page. So the next one dictates the same as above name. In this, in this case, it's password1, spelt wrong, of course. I did that on purpose. Password1. So now we can tell that the, user, the name username and the name or the value of password1 is being sent to login.php. So 
That being said, that should pretty much be it, right? Because there's only two fields on this form, username and password. So then looking down below here at the very bottom, input type submit, well, that's a button. So you're submitting uh, the information in this page to post to login.php. And the value here is login. So that's actually what the button says, right? Login. But if you look just above that here, there's a field here that doesn't belong. It says input type equals hidden. So we know type dictates what's shown on the screen, whether it's text, password, or hidden. So hidden means it's not showing up on the screen. Well, if we're asking for this information, why wouldn't it be shown on the screen? So if you look here at name, well, it says hint. Well, okay, so is that also being submitted to login.php? I don't know. It looks like it is because it's inside of the form code, but well, there's no input for us to do here. So then if you noticed, it has an extra value in here or an extra uh, section in here that's called value. Hmm, gee, well value would be pre-filled in for us, right? So like if you're going to a forum and it says, uh, are you male or female? And the first value is male, well that value is selected in the form uh, code that's automatically selected first for you. Now you'd have to hit a drop down menu to tune, change to female if that was the case. Well, okay, so it says value password 101 and it's spelled correctly. Well, since it doesn't fit, gee, I wonder if that's not the password. See, a lot of times when um, the reason why this is possible is because a lot of uh, novice web programmers will comment on their code but either they won't comment right or they won't remove the comments when they're done. See, it's okay to comment on your code, when, especially when you're writing a long, uh, long code. Um, you know, you want to keep track of what your functions are and what you're doing so you, you can reference it if you're debugging or something like that. Uh, but you're supposed to erase all sensitive information once the script goes live. Uh, and so a lot of people, you know, especially if it's a very long amount of code, they'll forget to actually erase those values. So lucky for us, they're just sitting there in, in, the, in the plain sight waiting for us to look at it. Um, in this case, it looks like maybe he was trying to create a, uh, a form and then he uh, messed up and he found the right values but forgot to take out the incorrect value, which is what we're looking at here now. Input type hidden, name equals hint, value equals password 101. This also happens a lot when novice programmers are copying, pasting, uh, copying and pasting code from somebody else that wrote it. Now, they don't do any type of validation. They don't really know too much about the code. They're just like, hey, I need a login form. Quick, copy and paste this, right? So they don't bother to look it over. So they don't know if the other guy's you know, code secure. They don't have no idea. Maybe the person they got it from is still a novice and they still have no idea either. Uh, so it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. I've seen that happen before. So moving along, well, it's giving us an option to put in a username and a password. So let's just, for the kicks of it, try this as the password. So we'll copy this. We don't know what the username is, so let's try to leave it blank first. Let's just paste this in. Hmm. Oh, gee, hey, it worked. So there was no validation for any kind of uh, information supplied for the username. Well. A secure PHP code would not only validate the username, but it would also validate the password. And then it would be using a uh, hashing logarithm to hash the password, paste that to the database, and then pull and decrypt from the database and pull it back down. And if it was successful using sessions, it would allow you to log in, right? So if all the credentials matched up and using a session variable, you'd be able to log into the page and you'd be fine. Well, okay, so we made it past that part. And it says, ha, good work. Click here to get your videos. Fantastic. Let's take a look at that code, actually, for just a minute here. I just want to kind of show you what's happening here. So view page source, ha, good work. Click on, and then this is the link to click on here. Now the H A href specifies that that's the link that will open up when you click on it, right? That's basic HTML stuff. So it looks like, well, it's going to videos uh, slash video slash download. Well, gee, if I just broke past the password login and I wanted to get access to this again later, I'd probably just save that slash video slash download and append it to the URL 
uh, later on. But uh, for right now, we're just going to go ahead and click that link. And then it comes up here. Now, if you noticed, uh, if you remember reading on that blog post, there was two parts to this. The first part was to get past the web page, and we actually did that, and that's great. So now we have access to actually download the zip files. However, the second part of it, the little twist that I threw in there for you guys, was was the zip files are actually password protected too. And you kind of have to use logic in order to, you know, break into those zip files as well. So, hmm, well, the last time we used the logic to break past the login screen, we were looking at page source code. And hey, look at this down here. It says zip file password, just kind of hidden, out of the way, underneath some ads. And uh, it looks like it's already got a value filled in. Now, you remember in the last code that we looked at, the value was already filled in, whereas in the username and password fields, there was no value assigned to it, right? So, hmm value was already filled in but it was type hidden it wasn't showing up on the web page itself right so keep that in mind so now we look here on a page and it says zip file password okay well, let's copy this and let's see what it does let's just open up another tab to see if it even posts any clear text up oh, it doesn't it just keeps posting the password uh, dots if you will so that's not gonna work we're gonna have to figure out another way around it so let's take a look at the uh, source code on this page as well. Oh hey, there's more source code here. We're gonna have to actually take a few minutes and go through it. Well, okay, we can see some ad code there. We can see some uh, other code here. And, hmm. Okay, if we're looking down, up oh, script type. JavaScript, okay, that's not gonna be it. Oh look, we did a quick search here for zip file password. And if we could do that, always control F and then zip file. And hey, it starts to highlight it for us here. Zip file password. Okay. Input type is password. Okay, so we know that that's why the dots are showing up. Right, so you can't copy and paste dots. It's never going to give you the clear text. And the name is zip password. Okay, that's kind of odd. Moving along. And the value, now remember in the last source code here, the value was password 101. So that's what there, the script would be ex expecting you to send to it as password 101. Well, gee, the value here is netsec now. Well, I wonder if that's the password for the zip files. So what we would do here is go ahead and download a zip file, which I've already done. Oh, gee, it's extracting the files. Imagine that. So it looks like we actually guessed the password correctly and uh, we actually managed to break both pieces of the puzzle. So now you can actually see that we've extracted it and it's in there, Tor Buddy. So that was pretty much it guys. Like I said, it's really simple. When you use logic and you take a out of the box approach towards it, you'll be surprised at what you find. Now I know it may have been frustrating to some of you who, you know, it took a while to get into or it didn't happen right away and that's part of what we're trying to learn here. Not only using logic, which I will keep driving home to you until you actually get it and you really start to use it, it's all about keeping it simple. You want to try to start off as simple as possible because a lot of the times things are very simple to get into and you wind up overcomplicating it thinking that somebody knows more than you and they're obviously on top of their stuff and hey they don't make mistakes people are prone to make mistakes guys I make mistakes I'm sure you make mistakes everybody does so it's up to us to find those mistakes exploit those mistakes and move forward from it and that's pretty much it in the next uh, hacker challenge of the week we are going to add our latest videos up into the uh, FTP there and we are going to have those for download as well as these videos for those of you who didn't get them. So that's not going to change. But there's going to be a new challenge to be able to get access to these videos again. And it's not going to be as simple as this looking at the source code, getting a password from a form entry, and being able to put in a password. It'll be a little bit more trickier than that. I've noticed that some of our users are more advanced users, some of our members. And so I want to make it more challenging for them while also being able to give it a good challenge for our beginners uh, or people who haven't gotten into it yet. So we are actually going to do a mini series on uh, web scanning and web vulnerability assessment. Um, I'm not too big on 
you know, vulnerability assessment on websites and stuff like that, but I can show you guys what I know uh, and hopefully give you some insight into that world. Uh, there's companies out there that specifically do web application uh, auditing and penetration testing on those. Uh, it is something that I do offer my clients, but, uh, you know, I, I don't focus on it too much per se. Okay, so um, we'll get into that stuff too. So stay tuned, guys, for the next videos, and I'll see you then. Have a good night and thanks for watching.